The TaxPert tax calculator app lets you work out tax and national insurance for clients with different types of income. I've tried to accommodate as many different scenarios as possible and the main idea is to enable you to check whether your own software, tax return software and or HMRC's calculations are in fact correct. We all know that the revenue have had great difficulty since 2016-17 in correctly calculating tax. Well, to use our calculator, you simply input the income figures. I've already input employment income of 5,250, gross interest of 8,000, and dividends of 37,000. And then instantly you can see what the tax liability is. It's 2,331 pounds and 25 pence. But in this particular case, the HMRC figure, which is this figure with an orange background, makes it 2,643 pounds, and so HMRC's calculator is in fact overcharging the client by over £300. Uh, I have included full workings, so you'll be able to click on the tab that says workings, and you can then see how I've got to calculate the 2,331. Uh, the problem is in the allocation of the allowances and reliefs, and you've got the full details there. I've allocated the personal allowance in that way, the HMRC calculator allocates it in a less favourable way. Well, let me go back to the main input screen and show you what else you can do with it. Down here, you can select whether the taxpayer is of state pension age or not, and also whether the taxpayer is Scottish or resident somewhere else in the rest of the United Kingdom. And if I were to increase the employment income to, let's say, £28,000, you'll see first that the revenue figure now agrees. So in this case, HMRC have got it right at 12,975. But then you'll also see that we've got national insurance of 2324, and that will be the primary class one. Well, if I were to change the state pension age from no to yes, in other words, you've already achieved state pension age, you'll notice that the NIC has now disappeared. So no national insurance. Let me put it back to no, and then see what happens if we change it to Scottish. At the moment, of course, the total tax liability is 12,975, but if I change it to I for Scottish, it goes to 12,985. So there is a slight increase because of the different Scottish rates. I can also, of course, select I or nay, the state pension age for a Scottish taxpayer. And that'll again get rid of the primary class one. Well, let's go back to a UK uh, non-Scottish taxpayer and somebody who is not yet of state pension age. What we've then seen, that should have been a no, is the calculations for a fairly basic example. But even with that, the revenue managed to get it wrong when the employment income, it could have been a company director, was only 5,250. We've also got the child benefit charge, a possible calculation there. Uh, let me put the income figure up to say 15,000 of employment income. Oh, that's a coincidence, that gives me 60,000. Well, if I put in a child benefit figure of say 2,400, so that's the amount the family has claimed, I can see immediately beneath that all of that will be clawed back. And we'll see on another tab how that is set out. But if I were to reduce the employment income down to 12,000, then look at the high income child benefit charge figure, that reduces to 1,680 uh, because the total income there is between 50 and 57,000. So I've tried to incorporate as many different types of income and reliefs as possible. You can see that we've got space for reliefs against total income, those that are subject to restriction, such as losses, qualifying loan interest, and also those that are not subject to the restriction, uh, such as overlap relief, share loss relief on uh, EIS shares, etc. And then we've got the net gift aid and the net pension contributions, all of which can affect the tax liability. If you click on this link to workings, well, we've already seen some of the workings, and from there I can go back uh, either by clicking a button over here, that button says home, um, or by selecting the appropriate tab. At the moment, we're just looking at 1920. Uh, what I haven't shown you yet is the way in which the calculator takes account of property income. You'll see that's a greyed out figure. 
and that's because I have another tab, if I select it down at the bottom, and the property income tab, let me enlarge it for you, uh, of course takes account of the finance cost restriction. So if I were, for example, to put in uh, net rentals of let's say 26,000 pounds, and for 1920 this is, uh, finance costs of let's say 14,000 pounds, then straight away, and by the way, it's replicating these figures for 2020, 21. Um, let me just reset everything to zero because that'll stop the replication. Uh, so let's go back and put in the 26,000, I think I had as the rental income, doesn't really matter, uh, 14,000 as the finance costs. And straight away, you can see that the amount of finance cost allowable as an expense is just a quarter this year for 1920, and that's three and a half thousand. And so the taxable property profit, that figure of 22 and a half, is what will then automatically go into the previous tab, which is the main calculation sheet. So there's the 22 and a half thousand there. But also on the property income tab, you've got a full explanation of the way in which the tax reducer is then calculated. And the bottom half of this tab shows me down here that the 10 and a half thousand of interest that isn't allowed as a deduction is then going to turn into a tax reducer at the rate of 20% and reduce the tax bill by 2100. We'll see in a second where that comes, but notice that I'm comparing that figure with two other figures. The two other figures are the adjusted property profit here of 22 and a half thousand and the adjusted total income figure of 22,000. And HMRC are currently uh, coming to the conclusion that their calculator gets this wrong in some cases, they're going to agree with me and there will soon be a new exclusion relating to an overcharge by HMRC on some property landlords. So you've got full uh, details of all the property income. If we have a look at the personal tax client report, and let me expand it for you, it simply repeats the different income elements uh, but then works out or shows you the total tax figures. And again, I've got the HMRC figures linked in with an orange background. Happily in this example, we agree. And you've got the 15,900 tax liability, but there is then that property interest tax reduction of 2,100. And that then gets us down to 13.8, but we've got to add back a high income child benefit charge, which the revenue have got as well. So that gets us to 16.2. And we've then got the space to put in the payments already made on 31st of Jan um, or 31st of July 20 when we get there, add in any capital gains tax, and you can show the client what the uh, tax liability will be on 31st of Jan 21. Uh, all of this, of course, ignores the COVID-19 um, relaxation of payments of tax that some taxpayers may take advantage of. So there you've seen all of the main uses of the tax calculator app. Um, the next thing I'd like to show you is the current year's table, um, same layout as before, 2021 income, etc. And this you can use to work out for clients what their likely liabilities will be if they can estimate the 2021 figures. And I've got a couple of um, little gadgets here or widgets. Uh, first, I can replicate down here the 1920 income. So if I were to click that, it will simply replicate the 1920 income. And you can see that we've got the same income, although I noticed that there's a difference between the total of 79 and a half and 83. And that's because, cunningly, the property income, if I go back to that page, has taken account of the fact that in the current year, you will get no deduction for the finance costs. All of that will convert into a tax reducer. Um, so that's highlighting the change uh, that George Osborne introduced coming fully into effect this tax year. But we can then use this little trick down here, the equalize function. I notice that the net income for this particular taxpayer is 52,395 for 1920, but has fallen to 51,687 for 2021. 
and that reduction will be because of the change in the property finance cost. Well, if I click that equalize button, it'll whiz and whir. This is a solver added, so that's the dividend you would need. And you can see that what that has now done is equalize the net income so that there's no change in net income uh, between 1920 and 2021. Just a little bit of fun, um, not obviously the main purpose of all of that. And then the final point I want to show you is the reset function. Uh, if of course you want to start from scratch, just set that reset button. You'll have to reset the property income separately, but that sets everything to zero except the property income figures. Uh, those can be reset on their own tab. And then we're back at square one and we can start again. Full workings, uh, both for 1920, uh, showing the allocation of allowances and reliefs and for 2021, and uh, that's it. So a very useful tool, I hope you'll agree, uh, primarily for being able to advise clients on what their liabilities will be. I should just go back to that personal tax client report because I didn't really focus on that one, um, but also an invaluable tool when it comes to checking whether HMRC have correctly calculated tax. I'm afraid their exclusions continue to uh, show us cases where their calculator is getting it wrong and our calculator gets it right.